Discover secret flirting tips and flirting advice for meeting, dating. Discover secret flirting tips and flirting advice for meeting, dating and romancing hot single girls. If done right, they might flirt back. I know I know who wants to get flirting advice from a middle-aged man? When you picture this situation, you probably see yourself sitting in front of the television, beer in hand, trying not to roll your eyes at the flirting advice coming from the mouth of a man with a beer gut and a middle-aged wife nagging him. Conversely, you might be envisioning getting flirting advice from a smooth-talking guy with slicked-back hair who gets the ladies because he's got deep pockets. But this is not that kind of flirting advice and it's not coming from that kind of middle-aged man. No, instead, this middle-aged man is the one who is average-looking and of average income but who has years of experience in the changing world of flirtation and has developed flirting advice which works more often than not. This flirting advice is good for both men and women of any sexual orientation. The best of the flirting advice gained through hard experience is the rule that if you've got it, flaunts it. This is followed quickly by the lesson that if you don't have it, you shouldn't display it. This flirting advice applies not only to the physical but also to other levels of flirting interaction. How many times have you been around that guy who told a joke, and everyone laughed to be polite, so he told a dozen more? You don't want to be that guy. What you learn as you go through years of flirting is that there are very few people who have it all. You just aren't going to be the most beautiful, smartest, more powerful, most charming, funniest person in the room, because that one person just doesn't exist. As a middle-aged man, I am just not going to have the body of a 20-year-old guy. But what I do have is my own collection of traits and experiences. The best flirting advice I can offer is that you have to realize what your strengths are and make use of displaying those strengths to others in a way, which is natural for you. The purpose of flirtation is to interest another person in you, so showing them what's great about you is the way to go. The other critical piece of flirting advice I can offer is that flirting is supposed to be fun. You should enjoy it for what it is, rather than always aiming for a specific goal and being disappointed if you don't achieve it. For example, if you are flirting with a girl across the room at a club, and she invites you to dance, but you don't leave with her number, you can have two reactions. One is to be disappointed that your flirtation didn't lead to a whirlwind romance. The other is to be happy with the fact that your flirtation interested her in dancing and you probably had a good time while doing it. Flirtation doesn't always lead to satisfaction, which is what keeps us all interested in the game. It's the reason that people who are perfectly happy in their committed relationships often flirt with others. We like to be liked and some of the best flirting advice I've found is that there should be just as much pleasure in the chase as there is in the catch. Related to this is the flirting advice which starts with being comfortable with who you are. As you get older, you realize that most people aren't paying attention to your flaws nearly as much as you are. You are your own worst critic when you should be your own best friend. If you take nothing else away from this flirting advice, take this, if you are a person who enjoys flirting and does it appropriately, your flirtation will usually be well received.